Welcome to Hollywood. For about 56 episodes, they've been in New York, and we felt it was time to get Beckett and Castle out of the New York surroundings and bring them to Los Angeles. It was presented to us we were going to film in an exotic location, which gets everybody very excited. I immediately think of something tropical, you know, Fiji, Cayman Islands, Hawaii, these kinds of things. And then we found out that the exotic location would be Los Angeles. So if you don't know, we film in Los Angeles, but pretend it's New York. So the difference is, now we're filming in Los Angeles, we just don't pretend it's New York. So on page 53, uh, Hollywood Boulevard now becomes a Santa Monica Pier. The L.A. episode has been very difficult because I think we've been so wrapped up in making L.A. New York that we kind of lose sight as to what really says L.A. And the Santa Monica Pier, what says it more than that does? It was fantastic. And I think for the crew in general, I mean, it's the 22nd episode of a very long season. We needed to be on the beach and just feeling the fresh air on our faces and in our lungs. We had this incredibly beautiful it's day. It's kind of insane, yeah. though, right? Because it was packed. Right? It was, there was like it was crazy. Uh, it just got more and more crowded as the they? word went out. Oh, and by the way, learning how to hurdle a fence in front of 200 people mm. is really awkward. Stana, she's very game to do any of those stunts. You have to hold her back. She wants to do all of them, but she did very well. And cut! Good! This is Mike Royce's place? Did I miss the part where you told me he was rich? It's fun to come to Los Angeles and deal with having stars being around, having stars just live next door. Finding somebody who had a level of celebrity where everybody would be able to recognize them, but also going outside the standard Hollywood and embracing the music industry, we thought was one of our best bets at having a really fun pop. Hello. You're Gene Simmons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm that, uh, I'm that guy with the long tongue. Gene is a very buoyant personality. Um, and and he was keen to do it, so it ended up being a, quite a good marriage. Hello, who's this lovely lady? I was invited to be uh, the powerful and attractive Gene Simmons, and through method acting, I figured out how to be myself. I've dressed up as him for Halloween. Mm. Hello. I was dressed up as him for Halloween. Mm. He's very polite. Agreed. This is so weird. What? I've dressed up as him for Halloween. I did too. There was a definite effort made to have a castle in a convertible driving through Beverly Hills. We got to zip around in a beautiful Ferrari, a brand new, beautiful Ferrari. It was nice. It's kismet. <laughs> It's the first time in the show he's, that he's driven a car, so I think our fans will be pleased to see that he does know how to drive, even though he's a dyed in the wall New Yorker. Rick Castle, I cannot believe we finally got you out here. Tony, you money grubbing bastard. How is filming? I knew from the beginning that I wanted to visit the movie set, and you know, the gag being that we could do it on our own lot and we could introduce our own sort of characters with the twist of them being the actors. A lot of our extras were our crew guys. A lot of the guys you see messing with cameras are our guys that are usually messing with our cameras. When they come on the lot, you'll see uh, just off to the side what looks to be the inside of an airplane, and that's where we shot the airplane scenes of the episode. Hey, you do not hear that from me. Oh, there are the actors that play Rayleigh and Ochoa. Huerve, Taylor, this is your creator, Richard Castle. Yo. We see the guys playing Esposito and Ryan, and they're very good. They look very much like Esposito and Ryan. Just a little more Hollywood. Big fan, bro. Thanks. Bye. We cast two actors who are supposed to be doppelgangers for Esposito and Ryan. And we like to joke that if either of them get uppity, we always have somebody to fall back on. These are the guys that you got to play us? Yeah. That's a nice watch, actually. Yeah. How come you don't watch that nice? And then, you know, the gag of, of bringing a suspect into the, the movie set interrogation room just seemed like a really fun way to sort of twist things up. Dude, you're a security guard, and you know what they do to guys like you in Lombok. I had to redesign the interrogation room to look like 
Hollywood's version of the book if they created their own police station. The big change was the, the wall tree. And I wanted something bold. And I just expanded this a little, because there was a door, and that door is gone. So it's cleaner. And we'll turn this back within a day, back to the old interrogation room. All right, boys, we're done. Thanks for the room. Beckett's really constrained in New York. When she comes out to Los Angeles, you know, she has to go rogue. She doesn't have the mantle of authority anymore. So we see her picking locks. We see her going further than she would in New York because she doesn't have that authority. She's a little bit more flirtatious in some of the scenes. So we absolutely wanted Beckett to have a, a, a different look, a, a much more relaxed look when she came to Los Angeles. The first season especially was very important for the writers and the producers to say she is a cop. She needs to be taken seriously. And since then, we were given a bit more latitude to just move away from that because we've already proved the point. The first season, her hair was really short and stylized. I think that the producers really liked that look for Beckett. But also, Stana thought that Beckett should be a little softer and a little bit more feminine in California. But we were able to accomplish what we were trying to do, which was give her an edgy look and a softer look at the same time. I never realized how it looked like you. For makeup purposes, she was a little bit more tan and a little bit more glowy. It just kind of showed the Beckett side of having more fun and not so like uptight. In terms of what you wore, but the overall outfit was more of a relaxed kind of look than the typical Beckett, yeah. you know, cop outfit. Yes. There was a lot more fluidity. Even though it was a trench coat, it was a much softer silhouette. We made it really neutral with a little color pop. From very on, it you know, it seemed like you coming to LA, you really want to show off the sort of cool side thing, and you know, sauna and bikini is sort of a no-brainer. I think I have a better idea, and it involves this. <laughs> when you think of Los Angeles poolside at a hotel, you think of something bright. Yes. And we wanted to go in a different direction from that. First of all, there's a suggestion of nudity, which mm -hmm. is like really right. like risque. It's like, <laughs> she's coming out of the pool. Is she wearing something? We don't know. But then on top of that, it's a little bit more chic, don't you think? Oh, yeah, like Bond girl sexy. I appreciate a woman who knows how to make an entrance. Business of pleasure. Hopefully a bit of both be able to show Los Angeles is really fun for us. And I can see a future where we do step outside of New York for other cases. As long as there's people out there that are murderers or murder suspects, Beckett will go anywhere to find them anywhere. OK, cool, done.